Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to this live coding session and today we'll be writing a JavaScript animation using GreenSock. Let's see what we'll be building. This is a beautiful animation that can definitely have a place in the next web project you'll be writing. It runs at 60 FPS in web, in mobile and can be made responsive. We'll be coding it live and before we get into the code, if you use this animation or if you like this video, hit the like button, give me a subscribe, it's gonna help. I've got a set of great content including web animations, react, view.js that you would not want to miss. Alright, to build this animation, let's break the problem. So the first problem that we obviously see here is getting the pixel coordinates in the canvas. So we'll be needing the pixel coordinates, then we'll have to generate the particles and then we'll have to render them in the canvas. So it's a three step process. All right, let's get into the code. So I've written some of the code to save our time. So this is canvas, we're calling it scene. This is our CSS. The CSS is only centering the canvas, nothing fancy going on here. And this is JavaScript. I've created a reference to uh, the canvas that we had, created its con context, and this is the image that I've created in Photoshop. We'll be using this image to get the coordinates uh, to morph our particles. And so I've encoded that image in base64 and referenced it in a JavaScript variable that we'll be calling PNG. Right, let's start writing some code. So I'll create a function to draw the scene. And a good way to start writing the code would be to give our canvas some volume. So we'll give it's some width. The width can be essentially equal to the width of the image that we are using to get the pixel locations. So our PNGs dot width and similarly for the height. All right, now another thing to note here is that this image is a very low resolution image. It's 100 cross 100 pixels. Uh, the reason being is that we'll not be able to utilize the quality in image and the quality will increase our computations. So it's always suggested to use a lower resolution image, maybe 100 by 100 or lower. So, but we would not want our animation to run in that lower resolution frame, right? So we'll zoom it a bit. So we'll scale it by a factor of three. All right, so we have our canvas width ready, height ready. Let's, let's drop the image here. So we'll use context uh, draw image method uh, We'll tell it what to draw and give the coordinates All right, this should draw the image in the canvas as soon as we call this method. So Once the PNG is loaded, let's call the draw scene method There we go. So we have our image loaded now once we have the image loaded in the canvas We are free to take out the pixel data that we'll be needing to uh, to move our particles to get that uh, we'll create a uh, we'll create a variable we'll call it data this will store the pixel data which will essentially be an array and to get the pixel data we'll again use the context of the canvas uh, we'll use the get image data method and then we'll tell it uh, to get the data from 00, 0 to pngs dot width and height all right, so this will return us the image data. So once we have the image data, we loop it. Now why we are looping is something that I'll uh, come to really soon. Uh, so we'll create a variable y, we'll assign it to zero. We'll loop it till uh, data's width. And we'll again do that as a nested for loop for data's height. All right, uh, now let's loop the height. So we'll create another variable, we'll call it x. So x will be less than data's height and we'll increment it. So what is happening here is that this data is now an array that has all the pixel related data in this image. What we are trying to do is we are trying to find the uh, index in this data that will actually give us the pixels we need to draw. So when we need to get the coordinates, we need to understand that the pixels in the data array are organized as one long sequence of pixels, starting with the top left pixel and moving vertically towards the right. When the end of the line is reached, the pixel sequence continues from the leftmost pixel on the line below. 
Therefore, to calculate the index of a pixel located at x, y, we need to multiply the y coordinate with the number of pixels per line and then add the x value to it. All right, so now as we know where we'll get the index of a pixel, uh, we'll take the x coordinate, we'll add it to the y coordinate, we'll multiply it with the number of uh, pixels in a line and then because each of these pixels constitute to four unit as they are RGBA values, we'll multiply it by four to cover the gap. So now we know uh, at what point we need to create our particles for the animation. So data is an object that has a data array. So and this data array, we need to check the index where it's P and it is uh, greater than 128 now why we are doing uh, greater than 128 because uh, this data object will have uh, all the pixel po points now these pixels can also be noises which might not be visible in the image but when we are creating a particle that will definitely be visible so we are uh, checking if only the pixel is solid enough that it, it has a color ranking of 128 or above then only we'll create a particle for that x and y coordinates and now again as these are RGBA, RGBA values so the next three values will be the uh, values that constitute to the same pixel so we'll skip them all right so now we're ready to create a particle let's create that so a particle will essentially be an object now we know let's let's get back to the animation to see what are the properties or attributes for a particle for us so they all start at the some they all start at some point and then eventually they constitute or rest at uh, their pixel x y coordinate all right so there are four coordinates here uh, x1 y1 which are the resting coordinate and x0 y0 which are the starting coordinate okay so let's create the properties so we'll create x0 which will have some value we create y0 uh, which will have some value then x1 and y1 all right that that looks good enough so x0 we just found it'll be x y0 it'll be y now x1 y1 are the starting coordinate so they will be the center point so x will be basically pngs uh the horizontal center so pngs total width divided by two and y will be the vertical center so oops pngs total height divided by two so we got the resting point and the starting point let's animate them so to animate we are powering our animation by tween max if you are using tween light it works with it too so we'll, we'll, we'll be using two method uh, that accepts three parameters so the first parameter would be the particle object that we just created the second parameter would be speed so we'll have to add a speed this is basically the speed of the animation so we'll get a random number math dot random and this will return us a number between 0 to 1 which will be too small for us so we'll multiply it by 4 i hope this works okay so then here we'll be giving particle dot speed so this will give actually a different speed to each of the particles and then the third parameter is actually an object uh, of where we need to go so bingo so we'll give x1 coordinate and x2 coordinate so these we have already figured it out we just need to reference them here so the these will be x0 because these are the resting points that we're giving and y0 all right looks like our particle is ready now this for loop will loop and create a particle for every valid pixel in the image data so we need a place to store these particle objects so we'll create an array so we'll create a particles array that will store particle and here we'll push each of these particle in the particles array so particles dot push particle all right so our array is prepared now all we need to do is render the particles let's try that so we create a function render uh, that will basically loop the particles array that we just created so i will be less than particles length
all right and then we have access to context and each of these particles that we see here in this animation are basically rectangles so we'll be using the fill rectangle to create a particle it accepts four parameters first two are the xy coordinates followed by the width and height of the rectangle so xy coordinates we already know they are at the ith index of this particles array and they are obviously x1 and y1 and for the width and height uh, because it's a square we'll go with 2 and 2 all right so our random method looks good so we need to call it so once these uh, once both of these for loops are done uh, we'll call the render method so because render method actually pushes the particles in canvas and then updates their position and it's the animation so we'll be using the request animation frame api for better performance and smooth animation and then we'll ask this api to call the method render all right so we have something going on already then okay so the first thing that we need to do is we don't need to see this image so once we have the image data what we'll do is uh, we'll clear the rectangle so clear rectangle basically clears the canvas uh, so clear from 0 0 till canvas dot width and canvas dot height okay Now what we need to do is, so we have a frame getting rendered here, but the render method needs to render the other frames as well. So it needs to be a recursive method that will call itself. So each of those frames will be uh, rendered. Okay. So somewhere something is, uh, missed okay so this one will be x1 and y1 my bad all right so we have our animation but it doesn't look like what we want to do so that is happening because render is a recursive method right so every time it calls every time a render is getting called a frame is getting printed but the next time it's getting called that frame is not getting removed so what we're seeing is basically all the particles are still in canvas so once a frame is uh, published we need to remove those particles from the canvas because next time the same particles will be published again with updated coordinates so we'll remove them all right now it looks good but still all the particles are starting at the same point we would not want that so let's add a delay so we'll add a delay uh, let's say the delay is uh, the height by 30 maybe so all of those particles will not start moving at the same time as we can see right so the only thing missing is the easing effect so we'll add the easing effect as well so we have an elastic effect for this animation so it will ease out so there we have the elastic effect but the animation is a bit too fast let's slow it down a bit so all right so the animation speed is slowed down perfect so we need to add the color to it so context has a property called fill style so we'll be using that and let's fill it by say red so the hex for red is d5 one three four all right so that'll be it for this video guys in under 15 minutes we built a beautiful javascript animation using canvas stay tuned for coming videos and i'll see you guys later